Hi, I'm Bob Ippolito, primary author of a little thing called Mochi Kit. This is the Mochi Kit 1.1 intro screencast. What I'm using right now is the Mochi Kit interactive interpreter demo, which is basically the same sort of interactive interpreter that you get in Python. What it lets you do is it lets you type in expressions and evaluate them right away without having to write out an HTML file, script tag, and all that other garbage. It's very useful for testing things out and you know, getting things done quickly. MochiKit is a lightweight JavaScript library whose sole purpose is to make JavaScript suck less. JavaScript is passable as far as agile languages go, but it's very minimal. On top of that, what's there tends to be a little broken. Broken in slightly different ways across the 2 to 20 different browser implementations that you may care about. MochiKit primarily cares about three baseline implementations. The latest version of Safari, as you see now, Firefox 1.0 and later, and IE6 and later. There are plenty of regression tests and examples, so simply run them on your target platforms and let us know if you come across anything strange. If it's reasonable, we'll likely fix it. If you're interested in MochiKit or simply need some advice for JavaScript, sign up to the MochiKit mailing list. There's a sign up box at the bottom of MochiKit.com or you can go right to Google Groups, the MochiKit group, read it there, subscribe to it via RSS, etc. It's a low to medium traffic list, so it's not going to take up much of your time. What MochiKit does is it takes ideas from other environments, primarily Python, and applies it to the JavaScript environment as best as possible. Along the way, we made sure to write documentation for everything and test what we could. MochiKit 1.1 is comprised of several different components for some of the JavaScript tasks you'll be faced with when conquering the various buzzwords of modern AJAX, Web 2.0, Agile Rapid Application Development on Rails with JSON. MochiKit Async is a library for abstracting asynchronous tasks such as timers, XML HTTP requests, etc. Basically anything that happens but not right away. This is the root of your word AJAX, but it's not quite as painful as you doing it manually. MochiKit Async is largely inspired by something called Twisted, which is an asynchronous framework for Python for doing HTTP enabled kitchen sinks, Jabber enabling your Linux toaster over SSL with Python through an SSH tunnel, various other crazy things. They also enjoy destroying the sun now and again. The MochiKit interpreter has special support for something core to Twisted and MochiKit async called deferreds. A deferred is an object that's a promise to return a value later or raise an exception. So what I'm doing now is I'm using call later which calls a function after some interval and returns a deferred. The reason that I'm using partial to wrap the function is because I don't want to call it now, I want to call it later. And what partial does is equivalent to creating a new function object like this. It's simply a more convenient syntax. MochiKit is full of more convenient syntax. In addition, the interactive interpreter includes a special function called blockon. What blockon does is it takes a deferred object and it puts the result or error into the special interpreter variables. The wait function is very much like call later, except instead of calling something later, simply returns a deferred that waits a little while, then returns the value. So as you can see here, it just returned a value, and it's in the special underscore variable. The underscore variable is like the underscore variable in Python, interactive interpreter, or the dollar sign underscore variable in Perl. Basically, it's the result of the last thing that happened. Additionally, BlockOn also works with just about anything else that returns a deferred. So I can do a simple XML HTTP request here and grab myself an XML HTTP request of a JSON file. Got a request object, you can see the response text. But more conveniently, I could use the load JSON doc function to just get that document and evaluate it right away. Okay, I've got my document. I 
can look at the keys in the document. See, I've got columns and rows. And as you can see, that corresponds pretty well to what you saw in the JSON document source. In addition, if I have a deferred that takes a long time, the block on function allows me to cancel it just by evaluating an expression. You can use that to test your error handlers because cancellation is slightly different than a normal error. The real key to MochiKit is MochiKit Base. MochiKit Base is the functional programming, useful comparisons, and various other things that JavaScript really should but doesn't ship with. As you can see, the interpreter example I've been playing with doesn't display the useless toString value for arrays and everything else because the representation is really ambiguous. See, the representation for an empty list and an empty string are the same thing. How do you know what's what? You don't. So what MochiKit has is it has a repr function. Repr stands for programmer representation, and it allows you to concisely see what the value actually corresponds to. This is very, very similar to repr in Python or using something like bear dump in PHP, etc. Because JavaScript's comparators are broken, you see empty lists are not equal to empty lists, and populated lists are not equal to populated lists, Moshika has a comparison facility. Comparison facility has the same call signature as a JavaScript sort function, where if two objects are equal, it returns zero. If the, the first object is less than the second object, it returns negative one. And if the first object is greater than the second object, it returns one. And so using this compare function, you can compare lists of lists and just about anything else that has a comparator. You can add comparators to MochiKit, so you can compare your own objects. You also have the sorted function, which will sort using the, com the compare function automatically for you and return a new list, rather than sorting a JavaScript array in line. This is just like the sorted built into Python 2.4. One of the other key components to MochiKit is MochiKit DOM. MochiKit DOM is a painless DOM manipulation API. Its inspiration comes from the stand syntax of Nevo, which is something you've probably never heard of. MochiKit DOM is probably my favorite part of MochiKit, and it makes writing view code just that much easier. As you can see now, I'm just going to create a table object with one row and one cell using pure JavaScript syntax no ugly DOM APIs, no inner HTML, none of that. And see, with that simple syntax, I've created a table element. And I can just put that table element right there in my interpreter and look at it in line. I can do things like scraping the text out of it. I can change its classes, make it red with the error class there. And I can even create images and stick them right in here. And I will replace my table with that image, and there we go. MochiKit also has a color module, which is a full CSS3 implementation. It supports red, green, and blue with alpha, HSL, RGB, all the SVG color names, hexadecimal, and also HSV for you Photoshop users. The color object is also quite inspired by the NS color object from Apple's Coco framework, which means that all the colors are stored with values between 0 and 1.0 rather than 0 and 255. We do it this way because it simply makes the math a lot easier and it makes dealing with all the colors the same. Whereas in normal JavaScript, you deal with HSL colors and RGB colors quite differently. As you can see, I have all of the SVG colors here. I can get their hex string, etc. The Mochi Kit has a date time module, which is great for interpreting ISO dates and times, which JavaScript doesn't do natively. See, what we have here by default with the two ISO timestamp function is something that returns something, a local time 
very much like an ISO timestamp, but not quite. If we pass the second optional parameter as true, it will return a real ISO timestamp in the, the default UTC time zone. You can also parse ISO timestamps in all of the ISO forms. Here's July 1st. And see that returns a date object. And in addition to that, for more string fun, we have the MochiKit format module. The MochiKit format module has some great functions, uh, especially number formatter, which is something very similar to what you'd find in Java. And number formatter is great if you want to display how much money you expect to make from your Web 2.0 startup acquisition or how much more productive you're going to be with MochiKit. So what you do with number formatter is you specify a format string in almost the same means as you expect to display it. And that returns a function. Okay, and that formatter function, when called with a string, is going, or called with a number rather, is going to return a string in that format. And it also works with percents. And it even includes some locale support if you're trying to display French or German or however other representations for uh, number separators and decimal points. Although that's not quite easily supported right now, the functionality is there if you'd like to take advantage of it. MochiKit iter has some nice functions if you're used to the functional programming style, like chain and reversed, sum, etc. And if you're used to those from Python, they're there. The whole editor tools module is available. It's quite useful. And it's used internally by MochiKit DOM. And also, there's a nice little logging framework for debugging your applications. The logging framework doesn't spit right to your console because JavaScript doesn't have a console, except for in Firefox. But MochiKit is useful in all the browser implementations. So what it does is it logs to an object. And in order to get access to that object, you can either access the logger directly from your code, or what you can do is you can use the logger bookmarklet. What this lets you do is it lets you put logging in your application completely unobtrusively. Nobody knows it's there. No divs you have to turn on or off. You simply have this bookmarklet, which points to the logger object, the debugging bookmarklet function. And what that'll do is it'll pop up a little nice log inspector for perusing the log. It's got regex filtering, and it's got level filtering, and all kinds of other nice stuff, and a pop-up window. So it doesn't affect your document. Well, that's about it for the MochiKit 1.1 intro. If you found this was useful and like to see more in-depth screencasts on any part of MochiKit in particular, pipe up on the mailing list. Thanks for listening. Bye.